All right, so this is problem 7.23 out of Taylor's Classical Mechanics textbook. Before I go through the solution to this problem, please like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate it. So problem 7.23, you can read it here, but essentially we have a cart inside another cart, and they're attached by a spring. Um, and you can see that the positions are denounced big X for the big cart, and little x is the distance from the big cart center of mass to the little cart center of mass. And it mentions that the large cart oscillates at x equals a cosine omega t, which also comes from equation 5.57. Um, they're just letting delta be zero. So now the question is, what is the equation of motion for the system? So to start off, like with every Lagrangian problem, you need to know the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy will be one half, and then the mass, which we'll call m, times. So there's two carts that are moving in this case. You have the small cart, the small cart of mass, oops, meant to highlight. We have the small cart of mass M that's inside the larger cart. They're connected by the spring, which that'll have to do with the potential energy. Um, so we'll get into that in a second. And we need to find the kinetic energy for this system. So in this case, we have one half times the mass, and then what is the velocity of that little cart? Well, there's the velocity of we'll call it capital X dot. So the velocity of the big cart is going to impact the velocity of the little cart because as it moves, obviously, if this cart moves way over here, well, that little cart also has velocity. And then of course, plus X little dot. Hopefully you can see those are the different X's and that's the velocity of the cart that is in the inside. Okay, so we need to basically find the velocity of the cart, the big cart and the little cart. So what we have then is the large cart is forced to oscillate with a cosine omega t. So we have that. And then we're just going to have x dot being, so we'll have one half m a cosine omega t. And we want the derivative of that, actually. So if we take the derivative, that'll be minus a omega sine of omega t. So that is going to be your derivative, of course. So we have minus a omega sine omega t plus x dot, all squared. I should have mentioned that's squared because that's the velocity term. Okay, so we're going to need to square all that in principle, but that's your kinetic energy term. Uh, the next thing we want to do is the potential energy. So the potential energy of this is what? Well, there is the spring which we have to consider here. So for the spring, it's just gonna be one half, one half m x squared, or not m, sorry, k, x squared. That's of course just the potential energy for the spring. That's just that. So with our potential energy and our kinetic energy, we can now construct the Lagrangian as just T minus U, which is one half M X dot minus A Omega sine of Omega, oops, T squared. And then from that, we're going to subtract off our potential energy as one half kx squared. 
So with our Lagrangian, now we can do our Euler Lagrangian. So the partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to x is equal to d by dt. The partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to x dot. So with respect to x, we only have this term. So that'll be minus kx is equal to the time derivative. And then what we're going to have to do is a chain rule here. So derivative of the outside, you get m x dot minus a omega sine omega t, now raised to the first power. And then what we need to do is multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to x dot, which is going to be just one, of course. Okay? So with that in mind, let's close that off here. With that in mind, what is it we want to do? Well, we're going to want to take a time derivative of this. So minus kx equals mx double dot minus, so the derivative of, we have our constants out here, the derivative of sine omega t will be omega squared cosine omega t. Okay? So with this, and also uh, we have to distribute the m, don't we? That m needs to be distributed, okay? So now that we have this, we can rewrite, we can see this is very similar to equation 5.57. So we can replace this as x double dot. So that's just this guy. So we're gonna divide everything in this case by m plus omega naught squared x. So remember, k over m, the square root of that is omega naught. So when we divide both sides by m, right, that's omega naught squared. And of course, we're just moving that on over to the right hand side. And then we're going to say this is equal to b cosine of omega t, okay? So in this case, your b is just equal to a omega squared, all right? And then, of course, that's exactly in the form of 5.57 which is kind of what we were looking for. Okay? So that's how you do this problem. You write down your kinetic energy. Maybe the trickiest part is just knowing that you have to add these two velocities. So the velocity of the two cards added together give you the total velocity, essentially. Um, you just write it down as your oscillating function. Um, make sure you do the derivative, write down your potential energy, write down your Lagrangian, do your Euler Lagrangian, and then with just a little bit of rewriting, you can get it in the, the equation, you can write the equation the way that we want it to. So hopefully that makes sense. If it did, please like the video and subscribe, and I will post 